Fed, meantime, says the discount rate does not signal a change in monetary policy, but as with everything the Fed does and doesn't do, it's all open to debate, which is why you're about to hear from Bloomberg Television contributing editor Keith McCullough, CEO of Hedge Eye Risk Management. Keith joins us now by phone from his office in New Haven, Connecticut. And Keith, when I think of you and I think of Ben Bernanke and the Fed, I think of Montgomery Burns from The Simpsons rubbing his hands together, going, this is all part of my plan. I want you to tell me why the Fed's move is exactly what you've been anticipating. Well, one, Eric, the data supports it. So yesterday, you know, the real-time data won the uh, PPI number, the inflationary number, was a moonshot to the upside. You had a 4.6% year-over-year inflation number. And uh, secondly, you had the yield curve hit its widest spread ever. We call that the piggy banker spread, of course, which might be more like me being Mr. Burns. But the, at the end of the day, it's been a pretty good spread for the bankers, and I think that, you know, the time is now to raise that discount rate by which the banks have to lend. Keith, you mentioned the discount rate. St. Louis uh, Fed President James Bullard saying the market view that borrowing costs will go higher overblown. So when does the Fed act with Fed funds, for example? Well, this is um, it's an explicit signal, Deirdre. So at the end of the day, you know, you, you're going to see a lot of politicians make political statements today. You're going to see a lot of strategists make kind of cover-up statements because not a lot of people predicted this. But at the end of the day, it's on the tape. Markets don't lie. People generally do. So when you look at the two markets that matter, the currency market and the treasury market, I mean, both of these markets are doing exactly what um, the Fed's telling you, which is, you know, we're tightening. So you're seeing the dollar hit a nine-month high uh, up to 81 spot, 18, I think, this morning. And you're seeing two-year yield the short end of the bond market, which really hasn't budged, really bust out to the upside as well. Okay, but hang on for a second, Keith, because the spread between the twos and the tens, that so-called piggy banker spread, is still pretty close to that extraordinary high we saw it hit two days ago. Yeah, exactly, Eric. It's only five basis points away from its all-time record. And again, you know, that's a long time. Um, so we're going to have to see. My, my thought is that this is pretty simple. You're going to see compression in the yield curve, and you're going to see continued uh, you know, pressure on the short end of the curve in terms of rates heading higher. Keith, let's put, us, uh, put you on the spot here. You just talked about the euro dollar, uh, nine-month low, nine-month high for the dollar versus the euro. What kind of levels do you think we're going to see? Define in any way you like, either FX market or stock market. Yeah, it's a good, Deirdre, I think that, um, I think the first thing that's going to happen today is that currencies, you know, the dollar is going to get overbought. I think actually right here it's overbought and the euro is oversold. I, what I don't see is people pricing it into the U.S. equity market yet. So I think that there's, you know, futures are trading down 75 basis points or so. I think the U.S. stock market by the end of the day could be down as much as two and a half percent. So I think that the currency market's been pricing this in. The equity market, as usual, is kind of the Johnny come lately here and they'll be late to price it in. And that's where there's probably more, more room to make a move intraday. Keith, we thank you as always. Keith McCullough joining us there on the phone, Hedge Eye Risk Management and a Bloomberg contributing editor.